Mother often had premonitions she'd speak about afterwards. I can't square the mother I knew as a young kid with the suburban mama of now. Back then she was a witch. Father, I think, thought so. I could see he was in awe of her. She was something of a singer in those days, strictly small-time operettas. I got a telling off once when I tried her homemade cold medicine, though the taste was punishment enough. She was capable of drinking during the day. Once father was gone, I had visions of us losing everything. My weirdness I blamed on her. This was in the time of tests. I remember sills and sills of spider plants in a long corridor with mad paintings along it. The first time mother really hit me was to get me out of a trance. Then it became punishment for going into one. Her job was to have old friends round and do their hair for them. I expect there was too much time spent alone, alone with me. The way she stared through me it was almost the same thing. At least I had dead hair to play with. I'd watch Mother fill up with emptiness between phone calls and the hours waiting for Father to come. I liked those mornings when she was on the phone and sounding animated. I didn't care how much. I never feared her manic side. I knew I was in for a good day then. What scared me was her monotone. I shivered just then, thinking about it, and I was already shivering. She was suspicious of me. I fed her suspicions without wanting to. She had suspected father. There were odd words, tears, famously a plate smeared with ketchup thrown against a wall. Blood, I told my friends, which I understood suddenly. Father was having an affair. I doubt this now. He did have a glamorous secretary, possibly more than one. I only ever saw the one, my sole time in Daddy's office. There was a man called Clark, or Clerk, Clark Kent was the name I knew, who stood the whole time Father sat. I remember Father's voice being harsher than in the house. Africa was mentioned. I'd been given a toy snake with brown and beige scales and was playing with it. The secretary appeared as she was about to leave. She was wearing white gloves. Talking about father's death won't warm me up. One thing, though, it made us richer. Now that the money's gone, or more likely tied up in something, I'm glad it's cleaner that way. I learned all about men once father was dead. A beautiful widow with a pubescent girl isn't nothing. They came sniffing round, pawed us a little, ran off, then they'd come sniffing back. Why do I lie? We were safe enough in our house. Only the insurance man, Mother had a lot of dealings with him, got further than the doorstep. Mother's body had thickened before grief went to work on it. In the photo I have of the two of us from then, taken by some monkey making a display before Mother, she is alarmingly beautiful. Holidays were worst. One man, I remember, Mother called him Shoe Shuffle Man. We had just stepped off the boat when mechanically the music started up, 20 minutes it played for, and Mother did three or four steps of a dance with me. Always the same steps, dance from girlhood on, maybe to this day. Shoe Shuffle Man appears, sliding his moccasins across the planks, arms raised in a may I gesture, but directed towards me in order to get to Mother, who was now walking smartly into the reception area. A smoker's laugh and a few words of song, which Mother foolishly turned and smiled back at. He dogged us the whole holiday then, there was only the promenade, so it was easy for him. His grey-blue slacks were perfectly pressed. Why does that generation of men hate women? Mother despised them. She felt she shouldn't, but she did. Father at least had something gutsy about him. Looked almost like Robert Mitchell at times. I loved watching old movies curled up on the sofa. He must have seemed an odd fish to those slacked shufflers those clerks or clerks. Another time now. Not a holiday snap, this one. Father was even alive. I was singing in the choir. I'd coaxed Mother to come along and she was quite taken with us, spoke respectfully to our prim teacher. The girl behind me sang with a hissing sweetness that drove me to belt out the hymns. Only the mothers stayed behind and one father it looked like, until everyone was accounted for. No, he was simply a music lover, he said. You couldn't even accuse him of being a lover of small girls. I was put into my coat by him. 
He had charmed mother enough to have us waiting by the kerb while he fetched his car. I think I expected a Mercedes-Benz, but it wasn't that. The ugliest thing was the plastic covering on the seats. I asked about it, was told not to. I asked again as if I hadn't heard, as if that girl was still hissing in my ear. It came out that his wife was liable to roll around and dribble, something incurable. Mother coughed and his neck grew red, while I squeaked on the plastic. Bibi has what I need. I walk him all hours in this druggy park. We go round the lake and he sniffs the ducks. They have no fear here. Nobody has any fear. I send him into the bushes and he brings back the stick and I send him in again. And then the men come out, the young one first, the hustler, who, if he recognises me, always laughs. Bibi knows these boys too. I'd pass the time of day with them, but they have nothing to say. Little at first, and later, nothing. I think I've exhausted this park, then something new turns up. I found out a girl was discovered in leaf mould the year I was born. That was near the hyacinths. There was a service. Hyacinths were planted. If there was a plaque on some tree or bench, it's been ripped out. That was the right thing to do. Parks are for the living. I know where to go on nights like this. Not the streets tourists flock to before the weather turns. One street in particular I like, New Mirror Street. There are some poor there. They have a deal going that means they never leave. Only the rich sometimes move out and what they don't want I take. I'm not the only one, God knows. But if stuff's in my hands, sweetheart, try taking it from me. I talk like this sometimes, don't be put off. When I bark, Bibi barks and that soothes me. And I can hold my breath for five minutes at a time. I met my ex in this park. I saw all this as a kid, was wheeled through the gates out of the park, looked up at the same old clock in the burnt church. Now it's mainly offices. I don't mind, I hated that gloomy church. The old people could doze in it when the park was freezing. The gates are the same too, wonderful wrought iron with a design you think is dragons but is only plant stems. Now the man who made those gates, I'd like to speak to him for a day. Just listen and nod sometimes and let him ask me about BB and anything he wanted really. I wouldn't mind sitting beside a man like that. I'm not in the mood for the market today. All that fowl hanging upside down and making BB excited. I'd sooner take my chances in the museum. When you're hungry, you can cope with the smell of must better than roasting chicken. It's my own fault. I shouldn't walk so much. Walking is always fatal. Each day I tell myself I'll stay still tomorrow. Tomorrow comes and I'm halfway around the city before I remember. Why should I complain? Baby doesn't. I see hunger in his eyes sometimes, and I love him so much for trying to hide it. Cappuccino with nutmeg. I tell the boy in the coffee cart. Whenever I feel poor, I spend money. This won't be much, and I avoid looking down at Bibi. There's nothing for you here, boy, anyway. I'm talking to my dog. I'm called Femke. People think it a beautiful name. I've no opinion. That's who I am, and I have to live with it. I'm not suggesting anyone call the daughter Femke. I think it's older people who like it best. Maybe there were more Femkes in their day. It hasn't given me a beautiful nature. I've had a habit since I was 12 of tilting back my head and rolling my eyes till the whites show. Tess revealed I elect to do it, which makes me hateful. I don't have visions or say anything memorable, though I do moan. Eerily, I am told. Mother used to call me twisted. There's a Chinese proverb, cut a blade of grass and you shake the universe. When I heard that from the ex I met in the park, it was our first meeting, I tore handfuls and handfuls of grass in a frenzy. It's nothing but a big barn where I live. There'll be people there when it's offices. The work keeps getting put back. I've lived in a place like it before, also near the harbour. I'd sneak old friends in and out till everyone got too casual and I couldn't shift them, even on days when the owner came round. I don't make the same mistake twice. It's not as if I have to explain myself. My name was mud in the squats long ago. The owner comes round here too. I almost look forward to it. 
He's got a bronzed complexion, maybe has a timeshare in a hot climate, and a man in his mid-forties punch still thinks he can run it off. He made a move on me once while showing me the gas heater. It came as a surprise. I hadn't been shown how to use one before and was quite interested. If I could be anything, I'd be an electrician or engineer. We were both hunkered, but his knees had cracked a second or so before he put a hand on my knee. I think not, was what I said. Quite proud of that, I think not. He said it had just been to balance himself. I didn't laugh. Now he mews round the place for half an hour, then leaves. There are advantages to being pretty. You know that the men who are nasty to you are psychopaths. Today you do well to make out my looks. I could care if there was a point. I don't want to be drawing too many glances in these streets. Men can be cruel, but when I look hard at them and they see me better, they change their tune. Except the psychos. Bibi is handy for them. He's part Alsatian. I wouldn't say he spots him a mile off, but he knows when I'm distressed. I did get entangled with one psycho. It hurts me to say it, but he looked a lot like Van Gogh. I have an affection for that bearded misfit, and not just because I'm fond of foxgloves and fields of wheat. The psycho was in tweeds but practically homeless. I spent a month in his company. He had a passion for identifying bodies, told the police his sister was missing and could he check any stiffs they had. I laughed at this because it's funny. Less funny when the man is next to you drooling over the word suppurating. We would walk along and look into houses and he would really fume at all the softness we saw. Well, I felt that way too, but I was nostalgic for it at the same time. I told him so. He threw me down and tried to break my head on a bollard. I wish I could feel the cold less. I would seriously like my puppy fat back. I last had it living with mother in the sort of suburban existence that's the same the world over, so I imagine. Even when we lived in the city we had a summer house. It was in one of those depressing beehives of summer houses on the outskirts where nobody gets buried in leaf mould and the dragonflies are the size of your hand. I found it impossible to feel haunted there. Couldn't even throw my head back. Father died on my twelfth birthday. There's this one place I eat where the waitress exposes an inch or two of her middle and it's just a seam of fat. She's not bad looking, she just has that seam of fat. I'd love to roll it between my fingers. People can't tell with my jumper in Parker how thin I can be. Because it does vary. Six months ago, if I'd spun like a coin, I'd have vanished. The boy in the park's name was Herman. His flat was in a street I passed ten minutes ago wrapped up in thoughts of mother. Bibi normally strains at the leash and might have done this time too. Herman left the city and me for good two years ago. Three years ago now. He would feed Bibi a dog biscuit one end in his own mouth. He clowned about like that when I wanted him to be serious was serious when I wanted him to be funny. It got my nerves. He was always making some point or other, educating me, I suppose. I didn't like to be educated. Herman is the type of man women love as a friend. I don't have time for that sort of thing and I know he was grateful. He wasn't the clumsy lover you'd expect either. My trances, he was the first to call them that, only amused him. They tended to happen in his room. He would crush the tablets in his inhaler into a powder and breathe that in, thinking he could join me this way. I know it's funny. It's funny, but I don't understand it. I felt safe in his room. I don't know why the chances came. He was spoiled by the fact he had a sister he was too close to. I'm judging by the stories he told and what I made out myself, but I never met her. He said they could be nostalgic even for the moment that was passing. I see her as a skinny puppet bobbing about with Herman, her puppet brother. They're both saying, this moment, no this moment, no this. We ended as we began with a walk through the park. I avoided the place for a while, swallowed my pride and stayed with some old squatter friends, telling them I had to sort my head out, which is the kind of language they still understand. There is a flakily blue sill underneath the huge window at the front and that's my garden. I have an assortment of roots and stems and makeshift pots there, sticking up at the sky. Perhaps in summer it will all be conventionally beautiful. It is beautiful now. I fill two bottles with water at the garage. 
In summer I can make two or three trips and have enough for whatever's sprouting in the sill. There are always things to look forward to. By summer I'll have been thrown out, no doubt, with one more grope for good luck. You'd need this metal door to feel safe. The water comes past here and you wouldn't believe the noise water makes unless you've lived next to it. There's plenty of iron and wood for it to slap against. I've fallen asleep with my hands over Bibi's ears. Sometimes I see faces at the window. You can buy white linen from the market for next to nothing. One day I'll get a roll of it and block them out. I had an attic room before, crammed full. Now it's as if it's all been stretched like a balloon. I keep what I need in one corner, what I don't need everywhere else. I've a Ghana goddess to keep me fertile, it's the real thing. We get in when the world's going out normally. I cook something on the gas stove, wash up and play with Bibi, and next thing there are no lights on in the suburbs. There's a view of them at the far end. By one, maybe two, they're a sheet of black. I can lie flat and look at nothing then. I'm the opposite in the morning. That's one thing that's changed about me over the years. I get up when I wake up. I'm up with a fisherman, in fact. Bibi would lie longer, I'm sure. Poor dog. It's like every day he gets more human. At least in the past he had a garden not concreted over where he could soak up the sun and not have me tugging him endlessly here and there. One thing I don't miss from that garden is the awful sundial, mother's idea. I have one luminous blue-green alarm clock turned to the wall, which I look at when I must. I made the owner make appointments and it helps me see that he keeps them, otherwise it could go. Covering mirrors is another thing I do, not with sheets, just some jumpers and towels. They're my mirrors, picked up on the street. I look at myself in them when the notion comes over me, then cover them again. Tonight, something's made me anxious, I don't know what. I'm not going to do anything different or go outside again. I'll just lie down beside Bibi and see if he stirs. Not blow the candles out. <laughs>